Not on. There, now I'm on. Try it again. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see you all this morning. We want to welcome you, and we would like to have a record of your attendance this morning. If you could sign the attendance pads and pass them. We want to welcome those of you joining us on YouTube at home, and we're glad you're worshiping with us. Please hit the like button and the share button and uh, share our worship service uh, with your friends. We are so glad you're here today. The one thing I want to let you know about uh, today is that this week is the week we have annual conference. It's actually a week earlier this year. Uh, most years it happens uh, when we have it in person, which we are having the in-person. We're going to Oklahoma City uh, for an in-person conference. But it's usually the week of Memorial. It usually starts on Memorial Day. This year it'll start tomorrow evening and then run Monday, Tuesday, and and Wednesday, let's see, it actually run Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, full day sessions. Uh, so until, hopefully it's going to adjourn Thursday around noon. Uh, April will be there as our lay delegate. Pat Graham is going to go to some of it as our alternate. Uh, Cave is going to be there uh, helping out with some of the youth uh, activities of the conference. And, uh, and I will be there. So if there's an emergency, call the church office. Trish can get a hold of me, but I'm basically going to be in Oklahoma City uh, most of the week, uh, next week. I think we have at least one announcement. Come on up, Ann. This church has an amazing uh, ministry outreach to the whole community. It's called the Blessing Box. It's down at the Circular Drive. And uh, some of you are used to bringing canned goods and things for that, and we just really appreciate it. But we have a lot of rice and beans and lentils and things like that in there. They don't taste very good if it's just water. So if you think about picking up some extra uh, tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, even a, a can of chicken broth, the people that really need this food and, and are cooking it for their families uh, could use something to put with it to make it a little more flavorful. And we are running out of vegetables. So if you can pick up extra vegetables or something like that, we would appreciate it. With inflation the way it is, it's really hitting some of these families very hard. And so they they clean us out on, a, on occasion, but we're happy to uh, to fill it up with good food for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I'll say more about how some of the economic situations kind of affecting so many uh, a, a little bit later. Let me just mention that uh, we are still contemplating the Cross and Flame Roadshow this year. Uh, Sam Kirk, who has kind of taken over leadership of that program uh, after Mr. Jerry moved, uh, is kind of looking into the options there. Sam is not here today because he has injured his leg and was hoping it was going to get better, but he has continued working. Uh, most of you know he does a lot of, of yard work and mowing and, and just general work around the church, and I think the leg's getting worse instead of better. So he has some injury that he needs to get healed from if he's going to help with the program. Uh, we're also going to need workers because he can't do it all. So we're definitely going to not start, definitely will not be starting next week. We'll look beyond that as to how he's doing, and if you can lend a hand uh, with that program, uh, you might give Sam a call, uh, because again, he's the one that's loading up the trailer and getting the supplies for the cooking, and then we have to have volunteers for uh, the food preparation, etc. He is also doing a lot of the work with the lawns, and I'm sure he would <laughs> be delighted if there was some volunteer assistance on that, so if you can call and help him out with that, that would be wonderful. But we are hoping to do uh, the Cross and Flame Roadshow in some capacity this summer. We're just not really sure uh, when that will launch or if we'll do it weekly or every other week or how often we can do it. But it is still in play, but it's uh, kind of being discerned and prayed about right now. So I'm not seeing any other uh, announcements. Cabe, if you'll come on up. And uh, if the congregation would stand, we'll enter into the spirit of worship. You join me in the call to worship. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Sing praises to God's holy name. Lord, you lifted me out of the depths. My God, I called you for help, and you helped me.
O God, from whom all things are going to come, lead us by your inspiration of your Spirit to think those things which are right, and by your goodness help us to do them. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God's peace be with you. Would you extend a greeting of peace and welcome one to the other? to be seated and our praise team will lead us in a song of praise.
Thank you, praise team. Such a powerful song. Please join with me in prayer. Lord, you are so amazing. You change our world. You change our life. You do things that we cannot imagine. And even this morning, Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear and receive with joy what you say to us today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Cave is going to come to share a passage from John chapter 21. If you are able, please stand for the reading. This is John chapter 21, verses 15 through 23. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went, went, went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the, at the supper. And that said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Jesus saw, when Peter saw him, he, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this, that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want you to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Every 
so very, very much. Next Sunday is a Memorial Sunday, and that is the day in which we will be uh, lighting candles and uh, reading names, offering prayers for those who we've lost, who've gone on uh, home to the Lord over the last uh, 12 months. It was just about this same time several years ago when my mother was still alive that we were planning our annual trip to decorate graves and do things like that. And while doing that, we were looking through some of our family history, and my mother was showing me some of the charts about that, and I came to an amazing discovery. Uh, my grandmother on my mother's side, who is named Granny, we called her Granny, her parents, her, her, her maiden name was Rock. Her father's last name was Rock. But as my mother was charting out this history, I noticed that the maiden name of my granny's father was Stone. And I said, is this a joke? And she said, no, granny's parents were Mr. Rock and Mrs. Stone. I said, Mr. Rock married Mrs. Stone. 
She said, yes. And I said, well, does that mean we're all the little pebbles? I mean, what? <laughs> and then I couldn't help but jab my mother a little bit. I said, the rocks and the stones. We're the products of the rocks and the stones. That explains a lot of things. Why there's so much hard-headedness and stubbornness in this family. And she said, well, I don't know anything about that. But... Um, Today we have a passage about a person whose name, Petr, Peter, was very similar to the Greek word Petros for rock, and by God's grace, this man who we think of as kind of sometimes weak and impulsive and had a lot of flaws, was a kind of shaky, how this man was to become a solid rock for Christ, or he was to become rock solid in his faith for Christ. On the day of Pentecost and in his writings, his epistles, talking about steadfastness and talking about how we had all become part of living stones in the family of God. I don't know about you, but sometimes my faith seems to falter. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need to become a little more rock solid in my relationship with Christ. And in this passage in John, which Cabe read for us from John 20, uh, 21, we have the story of Peter's, really his reinstatement or his reconciliation with Christ. And we begin to see the foundation of how this man, who was really kind of a shaky person morally and in terms of his own commitment and will, became one of the rock-solid proclaimers and disciples of Christ. And I think there are elements in this passage which tell us how we can build our faith, our life on a solid rock, how we can become rock-solid in our faith as well. And the very first principle I see is in verses 15 to 17, and it's simply this, we need to accept fully God's forgiveness and grace. Look at verses 15 to 17. When they had finished eating, they had met on the beach and prepared a meal. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. Third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter, it says, was hurt because he said that, but he said, Lord, you know I love you above all things. Now think of the history of Simon Peter. This is the one who just days earlier, what had happened? He had denied the Lord three times. He had failed three times. But now in a threefold questioning, his love and his relationship with Christ is reaffirmed. It's reinstated. It's reestablished. The forgiveness and grace of Christ was very real because Christ, in essence, is saying, even though you have failed me, even though you've not been a perfect disciple, I want you to feed my sheep. I want you to be in ministry. I want you to tend to my lambs. I want you to be the one who is a proclaimer of my word. I want you to be one who is in ministry for me, can we in our own hearts accept the depth of God's forgiveness for us? Sometimes that's difficult. I remember a scene that's so vivid in my mind. It happened many, many years ago when some members of my church called me one night, told me their daughter had been arrested. She was in the Oklahoma City County Jail. She was to be arraigned the next day. She had gotten involved in some criminal activity. I went down with the family uh, during the session when they brought the prisoners to be arraigned in their orange jump chutes, shackled by chains down the hall for the arraignment. And as they saw their daughter being paraded down that hall into the courtroom, especially the mother just lost it. The sight of seeing her daughter in that situation and in those circumstances just broke her heart. And in fact, she was guilty. She pled guilty. She was sentenced. She spent some time in a, in a woman's, women's uh, correctional facility. But that was a life-changing event for her. During her time of incarceration, she became acquainted with one of the chaplains that was attending that facility. She began attending Bible studies. 
she began to accept for herself the grace of God that she had never really understood, even though she had grown up in the church and she gave her life anew to Christ and found his forgiveness and love. She came out of that incarcerated situation and never turned back, was married, uh, continued her education, became a nurse, has children today. And that, 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 that event happened 25 years ago, never any further uh, difficulties uh, with the legal system other than serving the Lord and pressing on with her life to honor him. For each and every one of us, and, and hopefully it doesn't, uh, life doesn't bring us to a point to where we're in shackles and being led into a court for an arraignment uh, to begin listening to what God has to say for our life. Hopefully it doesn't take that drastic of a situation, but even if it does, even if life and our choices bring us to the point of despair, we can accept God's grace and forgiveness, and God has something in store which is new for us. He has a plan for us, and what he wants to say to each and every one of us, regardless of where you've been, regardless of the decisions you've made, regardless of the things that you've done, I have sheep that need to be fed. I have lambs that need to be cared for. I have a world that is hurting and needs to know the love of God. And I want you to be a part of sharing that message and that story. There's another aspect here that's so interesting to me. And it has to do with keeping our priorities clear, which I myself have difficulty with sometimes. And my guess is some of you do too. It says, when they were finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? There's been all kinds of speculation as to what he meant by these. Some guess that he meant, do you love me uh, more uh, than these nets? They were fishing. Prior to this, they had brought their nets up on the shore. Do you love me more than these nets? It's a way of saying, do you love me more than your occupation, your profession, your trade? Some think it means, do you love me more than these other disciples? Uh, because we all sometimes get into this, this task of comparison. Do you love me more? And I think this is part of it. Do you love me more than the incidents of the past? Do we love Christ more than all the times we have failed him? Because you see, our love for Christ can be greater than our incidents of failure. Do you love me more than the times that you have failed me? Do you love me more than these? Whatever it is for each and every one of us, it's easy for us to get distracted. It is easy for us to get distracted with our occupation and our job and, and somehow just to let the development of our faith kind of take a back seat uh, as we pursue and strive and, and try to develop ourselves in our professional life and, and earn for our family. It's easy to get distracted with our occupations. It's easy to get distracted with our hobbies. And it's sometimes easy to get distracted by our past as we think, God can't use me. I'm such a broken vessel. I'm so weak-willed. There have been so many times when I've let him down. Uh, I have surely been written off <laughs> the team Jesus and, and put on the bench. Surely God can't use me. But the priority is clear to each and every one of us. Do you love me? All he wants us is to love him. And to love him and trust him and to know that he is calling us. He has a plan for us. He is wanting to use us. So keep our priorities clear that regardless of our occupation, the direction we go, regardless of the fun things we do and the things that we can enjoy, regardless of our past, our primary goal is just simply to love Jesus and to turn our life to him, to walk with him, to give ourselves to him. And then... And here's one that will speak <laughs> to many uh, who are in the category of aging today. I'll let you define who that is. I, I'll put myself in this category. Can you trust God to the end? Look at verses 18 and 19. Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know... All things, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, 
You dressed yourself and went where you wanted, but uh, when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Now, we don't know uh, what the ending stage or chapter of our life will be, but I'm sure that God does. And God knew for Peter as well that he was going to be a faithful disciple, but at one point he was going to stretch out his hands in his own death of crucifixion. Uh, It's hard, sometimes better that we don't know the ending story, because the key is, will we trust him until the end? No matter what comes our way, uh, be it great joy, great comfort, a great satisfaction, or whether it be great challenge, a time of illness and affliction, which is the case with so many in aging conditions, or a time of persecution, a time when our faith is really put to a test, a time of real trial. Whatever that case may be, can we trust <coughs> that the God who has led us at each and every stage of our life will continue to lead us into the future no matter what the future might bring? You know, that's one of the blessings, I think, and I, and I heard a lady talking about this the other day. Of keeping a journal of God's blessings in our life, it's, it just kind of kind of keeps a track record of all the things that God has done and the many ways that God has been with us. And uh, uh, someone (laughs) told me the other day that they, they were looking at their journal of times when they were thanking God for blessings in their life, and they said associated with those recordings of blessings, they could think back to where the fulfillment of those promises were times of prayer. Do you hear what I'm saying? They they recorded the blessings and the things that God was doing for them. And it was a joy to look at those times. But they said beyond that, they could look back to the time when those promises that were fulfilled were really just formulated in prayer. In other words, their journal became a testimony of God's faithfulness in answering their prayers at each stage of their life. And almost every blessing they had received... There was a precedent or a previous type of experience where they can remember that they had put that on their prayer list and begin asking and turning their heart to God for that request. So trusting God to the end. And then finally, just simply keeping our eyes on Jesus. But sometimes it's more difficult than we think. Listen to verses 20 and 23. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus said, if I want you, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? That, that phrase in this whole passage stood out to me. So many times when I ask God questions, so many times when there's questions in my faith, I think Jesus is saying to me, so what is that to you? Can't I take care of this? Am I not the one who's got this in my hands? What is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die, but Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain until alive, until I return, what is that to you? Because, I don't know about you, but, but there is always the danger of comparisons. It's always easy to look at somebody else's life, and they have more comfort, they have more blessing, they have more freedom, they have more accomplishment. And when we look at the other's people, and our eyes are focused on them, if they seem to be doing better than us, then what results within us is a kind of a discouragement, uh, or at, at worst, uh, you know, kind of a, a sense of jealousy can, and bitterness can sent in, as why are they being blessed more than me? But if we look at others and they don't seem to be doing so well, if, if we look to others and we think, well, we're doing better than they are, I'm doing better than they are, 
then it's even worse because then we can develop kind of a pride. Look at me. Look how well I'm doing. Look how much God loves and, and blesses me. And, and I don't think either the discouragement or the pride is really very helpful in being about the business of feeding Christ's sheep and tending his lambs and doing the ministry of God. No, what Jesus is basically saying is just keep your eyes fixed on me. I'll take care of others. What is going on in their life? What is that to you? You don't need to judge them or be impressed by them. (laughs) We can rejoice Uh, when others rejoice. We can be comforting when others suffer. But we don't need to compare ourselves to them and be discouraged nor be prideful. Rather, Jesus says, just follow me. Just follow me. Life... uh, Changes about us uh, all the time. Each day brings new opportunities as well as new challenges. Some of these we face um, gracefully and acceptingly. Others are are hard to accept and deal with. But uh, back again to my reference uh, to my mother and my family. We don't really need to be, when it comes to matters of faith and our relationship with Christ, we don't really need to be hard-headed. What we need, rather, is to be rock-solid for Christ by keeping our focus on Him and allowing His grace to flow through us, by pursuing the goals to which He has called us, and ultimately heeding heeding to His invitation Come and follow me. Thanks be to God. I'm going to share a couple of joys and then uh, invite Sherry and Cabe to come. They're going to share a joy with us in video, and then I'll do the uh, concerns. First of all, the altar flowers are in celebration of Keaton Smith, a wonderful birthday uh, given by the Schmidt and Wadley family. So happy birthday, Keaton. We celebrate with you. We have had two families in our church who have loved ones who have uh, shared the joy of weddings this weekend. Uh, Stella Fay, great-grandson, was married last evening. Uh, They're a precious couple and a beautiful wedding, Mr. and Mrs. Dalton Lane. So congratulations to this young couple as they start their life together. And then Pat and Heather in Oklahoma City, (coughs) their son Josh uh, was married. I, I can't remember if it was yesterday afternoon or yesterday evening. I believe his bride's name is Caroline. I believe that is the case. So for Josh and Caroline, we wish them uh, God's blessing as well. Sherry and Cabe are right here, and they're going to come and say a few words. And uh, Sherry, you got up a little late today, didn't have time to get out of your pajamas. Is that what the deal is? She tried to get me to wear my pajamas. I said, I'm in them. This is what I wear to bed every night. So, I mean, I just... This ministry thing is just a part of who I am. Come right on. <laughs> this is pajama day, if you didn't know. So that's what that's all about. Oh, that's fine. Um, so we just want to take a, a moment uh, of time for the service um, and just celebrate what we've done in the past year uh, in our children's and youth department. So we have a little video to show you guys here in a minute. Uh, we just want to take, uh, uh, take a minute to say thank you uh, so much for, to all of you all for supporting us uh, financially with your time, with your talents. In any way, um, just uh, coming to this church, being a part of this church, thank you guys so much for uh, supporting us and letting us uh, do all the crazy things that we 
want to do throughout the years. It's been a really amazing year, uh, kind of slowly getting out of COVID, um, and we're still kind of in that process. Uh, but uh, this has been just such a fun, amazing year, and we still have uh, some really exciting things coming up this next year. So. And like um, Kay was saying, we're, we're really grateful um, for your prayers and your support, um, your volunteering, um, any, any way, shape, or um, that you've given. Um, I'm a little rattled because we had lunch yesterday, and I reminded someone about pajamas, but he forgot. So I'm a little upset. But anyway, um, you know, he was saying at the, at the beginning of the year when we were opening back up, we weren't really sure what it was going to look like. You know, we're, we're both new. A lot of the families we didn't know. And we just weren't sure what um, launch, relaunching our programs was going to look like. And you'll get to see now that we really had a, a, we really had a lot of fun.
Thanks for putting that together. So many wonderful slides and great memories of the life of this congregation over the last several months. There are uh, several I want to lift up in, by way of concern. Jackie Robertson, who had been staying at home with uh, son Dave, is back at St. Francis South, and I understand the issue now maybe has to do with some blood sugar, getting that straightened out. Keep Jackie in your prayers. Sally Henderson, who was in St. Francis South, has now returned home, but she's going to be at home for a little while, continuing uh, antibiotics to fight a kind of a serious infection. Uh, Willie Garvin was in St. John's, and they were planning to move her uh, to, I think, a skilled nursing. She's going to need to be in a situation where she can have some ongoing antibiotics for several weeks because of an infection in the blood, and I don't know if they have transferred her yet or not. Uh, mentioned Sam Kirk, and uh, uh, it's either a pull muscle or some, something's going on in his leg, and uh, hopefully he will get uh, get some treatment and get that healed up pretty quickly. Others, um, others that we want to lift up in terms of prayer concerns this morning. Okay, let us let us look to the Lord. Lord, thank you for this. Wonderful slideshow which reminds us of our life together. And even though, uh, dear God, there have been challenges this year, so much ministry has been done, so many lives have been touched, uh, so many people have been blessed uh, through our outreach and our efforts and our ministries. We do celebrate this morning with, the, for, with those who um, have come together in marriage, Stella Faye's grandson and the uh, the Graham's son and, and his bride, and we just pray your blessing upon them as they begin their life together. For members of our congregation who are injured or afflicted or facing surgery or recovering from surgery or fighting infections, and seems like there are, are a number, dear God, right now who need a healing touch, and so for Jackie and Sally and Willie and Sam and, and others who are also on our prayer list. We pray your blessing upon them. For those who are struggling just to make ends meet, help them find your provision and your way. And for all of us as a church, help us to do your will. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us just to heed to your call to follow you and be your faithful disciples in all things. For we come together now to pray, even as your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily need and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before Usher come, ushers come, I want to update us just on one thing. Anne alluded to it this morning in her talk uh, about the blessing box. Uh, as you know, with the rise of inflation, and that hits everybody in terms of the cost of fuel, groceries, utilities, etc., uh, inflation has gone up, and along with inflation going up, so has the need. We are getting calls on a regular basis for those who are needing food or utility help or other kinds of assistance. So the need is going up greatly. The flip side of that is that giving across the, the country is what I'm learning is significantly down. Last year in this church, we had one of the best financial years we've had in, in probably uh, 12 to 15 years. So strong last year. But when it came to the end of the year, we took money and put it into reserves, which we do have to call upon in our time of need. This year, giving has dropped off sharply. I talked to my son, who's the executive director of Youth and Family Services, and said, I'm concerned about this. And he said, Dad, it's happening with nonprofits all across the state. And I said, really? And he said, yes. He said, just think about it. The stock market is going down. So many people were able to make special gifts last year because the stock market was up. Some with the required, uh, required um, you know, amounts that they have to take out every year were able to translate that into gifts to charities and churches uh, to avoid taxes and was a blessing to those institutions. But the stock market's down. That special kind of giving 
has not been taking place this year. Plus, he said uh, the inflation is up by some predictors at least 8%, by some indicators maybe 11%, and one even at 13%. He said we looked at our chart of giving last year for youth and family services. We are down 13% at the same time as last year, almost parallel uh, to the percentage of increased inflation. So it's challenging everywhere. This congregation has always been very, very faithful. And we do have reserves that we can bring over if we need to, but our general fund is down. We are hoping to come to the end of May, <laughs> uh, even keel, <laughs> even going into the summer months. So if, by God's grace, you are able to make a special contribution, if you're behind in your giving and you're able to catch that up, uh, we appreciate it so much because it's through this general fund that so many of the ministries reflected in the slideshow and reflected by these pictures. So many of these ministries are supported. So we thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, our intent is to continue to try to serve this community and the members of this church as faithfully as we can. So Lord, bless us and bless our church. Uh, in this time of giving, help us to be good stewards of all that you entrust to us. Be with families uh, throughout this community who are struggling so much, in some cases just to have basic provisions. And if we can be a, a, a sign of hope and an instrument of peace and provision to them, help us to, to do so as best we can. For the, all of this we ask in Christ's name. Amen.
Commitments, number 369, Blessed Assurance, we'll sing verses 1 through 3. This is always a hymn of invitation. If you feel led to profess your faith or to unite with us in membership today, I'd invite you to come as we sing number 369. saying that like you mean it. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, with annual conference starting, I'm almost tempted to say have a great Memorial Day, but that's not till next week. But I do want to say next week will be a special time of worship as we honor the saints of God who have led us and been faithful to us and inspired us, have gone on before. It's a very moving uh, service on Memorial Sunday. I hope you will be with us. And as you go forth now, go in peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.